Over the years, doctors and scientists have made some great medical advancements. It's amazing how far we've come and all the discoveries in medicine that they've made. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and today I'm bringing you the top 10 vaccines that saved humanity. Starting off this countdown, we have chickenpox. Chickenpox is a highly contagious disease which is caused by the varicella virus. It causes red itchy rashes all over your body. Individuals with chickenpox may experience fatigue and a fever which in some cases has caused seizures. In some cases, chickenpox can be deadly to newborn babies or people with a compromised immune system. Before the vaccine, nearly 4 million people in the US would get it yearly. Now, the vaccine called the varicella vaccine can protect children from chickenpox and chickenpox related problems like skin infections, necrotizing fasciitis, aka flesh eating disease, pneumonia, blood infections, and brain infections. Moving on at number 9, we have influenza. The flu shot protects people from four different strains of the flu virus. These include the H1N1 virus, the H3N2 virus, and two influenza B viruses. Millions of individuals are reported to get the flu every year, with hundreds of thousands being hospitalized and tens of thousands dying. During 2017 to 2018, it is said that the flu vaccine prevented around 6.2 million illnesses, 3.2 million flu related hospital visits, and 5,700 deaths. Coming in at number 8, we have the pneumococcal vaccine. The pneumococcal disease is an infection caused by the bacteria pneumococcal. This bacteria can cause meningitis, pneumonia, and blood infections. Meningitis causes inflammation around the brain and spinal cord. This can be very serious and deadly. In fact, death can occur within hours. Other people have developed brain damage, hearing loss, and learning disabilities. This vaccine protects against 90 types of bacteria. According to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, it is recommended for individuals younger than 5 and older than 65. This vaccine can also help prevent some cases of pneumonia and sepsis. In our seventh spot, we have the hepatitis A and B vaccines. Hepatitis A and B are both a liver illness. Hepatitis A is a short term illness, whereas hepatitis B is chronic. So, Hep A can lead to mild to severe liver illnesses and is transmitted from contaminated food or water. Hep B can be caught by contact with the virus through blood or bodily fluids. Hepatitis B causes inflammation and damage to the liver. It also causes cirrhosis, which is scarring of the liver, which can lead to liver failure or liver cancer. Therefore, this vaccine protects you from a virus that can severely damage your liver. Moving on to number six, we have yellow fever. Yellow fever is a disease that is transmitted by infected mosquitoes. It is referred to as yellow fever because it can cause jaundice, which causes the skin and eyes to turn yellow. It can also cause liver and kidney problems. Yellow fever is an endemic in tropical areas of Africa and Central and South America. Individuals with yellow fever might end up developing more severe symptoms like bleeding from the mouth, nose, and eyes. Approximately half of those individuals die within a couple of days. However, it can be prevented by one dose of the vaccine. From there, you have lifelong protection. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with MMR vaccine. This is the vaccine that protects against measles. Measles is a highly contagious and infectious disease caused by the rubeola virus. When I say it's highly contagious, I mean it. One person can infect up to 18 people. The virus can remain airborne from where an infectious person was for up to two to four hours. And it takes anywhere from three to five days before a person shows any signs. Therefore, they can go around infecting people without even knowing. The first signs of measles are a runny nose, red eyes, and fever. Then a person might break out with a rash all over their body. So in 1963, before there was a vaccine, three to four million people got measles each year in the states alone. Out of those individuals, 500 would die, 48,000 were hospitalized, and 100 developed severe brain swelling. 2.6 million people around the world would die yearly without this vaccine. Now with the vaccine, there is a 99% reduction in measles and it is 96% effective in preventing it. In our fourth spot, we have the Hib vaccine. Hib or Haemophilus influenzae type B can cause major damages to a child's immune system. As a result, it can cause brain damage, hearing loss, or even death. Before the vaccine was introduced, 20,000 kids were infected each year. One in five would suffer from brain damage or would become deaf. The Hib bacteria can cause pneumonia, swelling in the throat, and major infections in the bloodstream and covering of the heart. It can also cause meningitis that affects the lining of the brain and spinal cord. In fact, in severe cases of meningitis, death can occur in a few hours. The Hib vaccine was available in 1992. 
Since then, rates of HIB have decreased more than 90%. HIB has a 95 to 100% efficiency rate. Moving on to number three, we have the DTaP and Tdap vaccine. These are the vaccines known to protect individuals from whooping cough, diphtheria, and tetanus. The DTaP vaccine protects young children, whereas the Tdap vaccine protects preteens, teens, and adults. The whooping cough gets its name as a result of the whoop sound an individual makes as they gasp for air in between coughing fits. Whooping cough is a lung infection that causes severe coughing, making it hard for the individual to breathe. The whooping cough is quite deadly in babies. It can lead to pneumonia, brain damage, or seizures. Before the vaccine, more than 200,000 individuals would get the whooping cough each year. But the vaccine has significantly lowered this rate. Now, diphtheria destroys the healthy tissues in an individual's respiratory system. As a result, the dead tissue accumulates to form a thick gray coating at the back of the throat or nose. This then covers the nose, tonsils, and voice box, making it hard to breathe or swallow. It can also make its way into the bloodstream and cause heart, kidney, and nerve damage. Severe cases have caused paralysis, pneumonia, and lung failure. But because of the vaccine, the number of cases reported each year has dropped by 99.9%. .9 in our second spot, we have the polio vaccine. Polio is an infectious disease caused by the polio virus. As a result, it can infect an individual's brain and spinal cord, causing paralysis of the arms or legs. When the virus gets introduced into one system, it attaches to the motor neurons where it can reproduce and destroy the cells. These are the cells that are in the spinal cord, brainstem, or motor cortex. Therefore, if they are damaged, then it affects your ability to control your movements. It is said that polio has been around for a while, as ancient Egyptian mummies were found with malformed limbs. Scientists believe this was from a polio infection. Polio is highly contagious and can lead to death. Once you get polio virus, there is no treatment to cure it, and that's why the vaccine is so important. This vaccine was introduced in 1955. Since then, there was a 100% decrease according to the Center for Disease Control and Prevention. In fact, polio has been eradicated in every country around the world except for Nigeria, Pakistan, and Afghanistan. That's because they have limited access to medical treatment. However, the World Health Organization is working on eliminating it from those places as well. And in our number one spot, we have smallpox. Smallpox is said to be one of the deadliest diseases known to humans. Smallpox is caused by the variola virus and is highly deadly and contagious. It is said that in the 20th century it killed anywhere from 300 to 500 million individuals. In fact, every 3 out of 10 people who got it died. The survivors were often left badly scarred or even blind. The death rate for infants was extremely high, being from 80 to 98%. Symptoms may include flu-like symptoms before they start to develop a rash all over their body. This rash then turns into pus-filled sores which then scab over leaving permanent scars. It is hypothesized that it dates back to the 3rd century BCE, since references to smallpox were found in ancient Sanskrit texts. Also, smallpox type rashes were found on three mummies. The vaccine was first introduced by Edward Jenner in 1796. Before Jenner, in order to try and find a cure against smallpox, they had a process called variolation. Basically, they would take some material from smallpox sores and then scratch it into the skin of another person. Or they would blow dried smallpox scabs up another person's nose. Thanks to the vaccine, the disease was eradicated worldwide in 1980. And that's all for today's video. Let's move on to our comment shout out. I'll be shouting out more comments from my video, Top 10 Scary Door the Explorer Theories Part 2. Kiro Senpi commented, I heard that looking into Dora's eyes would curse you when I was in middle school. I'm at the end of my first year and I still refuse to look Dora in the eyes. Well, she is pretty scary. She's got really big eyes, so I don't know, maybe she will curse. It's better, just don't look her in the eyes. It's better, you know, keeps us safe. I know Dark commented, hello, how are you, lol. I'm good, how are you, how you doing? Y'all good, staying safe, washing your hands, being clean? That's good. Erica Neiman commented, wait, hold on. Dora is evil or not? I don't know, she seems pretty evil to me, and she's pretty creepy looking, so I'd say evil, but you pick. And that's it for today's video. Don't forget to comment something down below for a chance to be featured in my next comment shout out. And as always, don't forget to give this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to Most Amazing Top 10 for more amazing videos. I've been your host, Lindsay Ivan, and I'll see you when I see you. Hey everyone, what's up and welcome back to Most Amazing Top 10. I'm your host, Lindsay Ivan, and today I'm bringing you a train. <laughs> Wow, that's a loud one. The hip bacteria can cause pneumonia, swelling in the throat, and major infections in the bloodstream. Oh. The hip bacteria can cause pneumonia, swelling in the throat, and major infections in the bloodstream and. <sighs>